How to use the CMAC DS? This is a question I open here. Today, let's discuss the step-by-step -step approach on how to use the CMAC DS. with maneuvering. If you want to go anterior, press the lever. If you want to go further anterior, pull the scope towards you. This is called the bar top maneuver. Now, if you want to go to the right, you could press the lever and then turn clockwise. If you want to go to the left, press the lever and turn counterclockwise. If you want to go posterior, release the lever. If you want to go further posterior, push the scope away from you. Apply water-based lubricant on the scope, particularly on the articulating part. Place the ET tube on the scope. You should be able to see a small crescent at the side of the monitor. It should be small enough so that it doesn't obscure the whole view and at the same time it should be big enough so that you know that the scope is actually inside the ET tube. So this will protect the patient from the scope and at the same time it will pre uh, protect your scope from the patient. Adjust the tube holder to secure the ET tube. The tube holder has an auto port. So if you anticipate a difficult intubation, uh, also if you're afraid that the patient will desaturate, you could place auto on the auto port. So this will actually serve as an apneic oxygenation for the patient. At the same time, the oxygen will blow away secretions, blood, saliva, away from the view of the scope. Apply anti-fog at the tip of the scope to prevent fogging. There are three general ways in using the CMAC BS. The midline approach in conjunction with the laryngoscope blade either with the direct laryngoscope or a video laryngoscope and the retromolar approach. An easy way of using the CMAC DS is the midline approach. To do this, you need to do a jaw truss. The easiest way is to ask someone to do the jaw truss for you. This is, this is particularly important so that you could actually concentrate on the intubation itself. Hold the CMAC DS with your dominant hand. Actually, you could use either hand. But in the beginning, it's actually a lot easier if you use your dominant hand. Okay. Since this is a mannequin, it's like someone is doing the jaw thrust for me. So, your non-dominant hand, you could anchor on your patient and you could actually guide the scope at the midline. So, this is called the pull cue maneuver. So, Hold the scope, you hold the scope with your dominant hand and your non-dominant hand is guiding the scope at the midline of the patient, of the airway. Okay, and then you go forward, follow the airway. So I use the tongue as a horizon because I know that my target is actually at the end of the tongue. Okay, so go down following the tongue. Okay, so once at the, I'm at the level of the uvula, you can see the uvula at the bottom of the screen. I actually press the, the lever a little bit harder to go for it to go more anterior. 
Okay, and actually I even pull the scope a little bit towards me. And then I enter the vocal cords. Okay. Once I've entered the vocal cords, I release the ET tube from the tube holder and then just push down the ET tube. Okay. I could act, if I pull down out the scope, I could actually see the marker, the black marker, at the side of the vocal cord. So I know the vocal cords is on both sides, so I know I'm inside. I can see the marker, so I know I'm at the right level. And then, just pull out the CMAC DS. When you're used to the procedure, you can use your non-dominant hand to lift the mandible with your thumb and index finger. Use the thumb holding the mandible as an indicator for the midline. As long as the scope is touching my thumb, I know I'm in the midline. The easiest way of using the CMAC DS is in conjunction with the blade, either a direct line the scope or a video line the scope. As shown in this patient with a very limited net movement and a form of legging score of 4, the CMAC DS is my word exactly like an ordinary stylet. However, we have the ability of seeing through the tip of the blade. The, the blade already swiped the tongue, so you have more room to work with. It also provides better orientation as most of us are used to seeing a blade. And you no longer need to perform a jaw thrust. I prefer this technique over the combination of a visual laryngoscope and a flexible scope since you would perform this laryngoscope and CMAC VS combo alone. You don't need an additional operator. What made the optical stylet famous is the retromolar approach. It is done on patients with limited mouth opening. I've only done this in a limited number of patients since there are limited indications for this technique. Some tips to remember. Go slow and use subtle movements. If you don't know where to go, try the darker areas. Remember, walls are dark, walls are bright. If lost, move back slowly until you see something familiar. Identify landmarks, especially the uvula and the vocal cords. Practice on patients with normal airway before proceeding to difficult airway. Having someone to do the jaw thrust for you when you're starting to learn will allow you to concentrate more on endoscopy. It will also enable you to use the pull cue technique where you maintain the scope in the midline using your non-dominant hand while maneuvering with your dominant hand. Lastly, applying O2 gives you more time to perform the intubation. It will also allow you to focus more on endoscopy and worry less about desaturation.